Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Good morning friends, we have been discussing about aerofoil for the purpose that finally at the end of the day the lift generation is to be through a proper wing. When you talk about lift to drag ratio to make our airplane efficient aerodynamically, again wing plays a very important role. When I want to balance the aircraft, you will see that there also selection of airfoil air plays an important role. Why important? Perhaps the most subtle role, unless we handle it correctly, finally you find the design is not a good design. If I just do a summary of whatever we were discussing, typically in my lectures I call this session as Man Ki Baat, right? I go back, I check the videos, I find, oh, at this point I have just gone very fast or perhaps I have given too many informations. Giving too many information is not right way of sharing knowledge, right? So that is why I always uh, create a one session where I cover it under Man Ki Baat, where basically we do revision and try to make things clearer for my mistake which I have done during my recording, whether in terms of writing something wrong or uh, going fast on a particular concept where I should have been a little more uh, slower and I would have, should have given a more stress. So I have just uh, given a thought in the night and let us summarize. What we are doing is airfoil or aerofoil selection and we are preparing ourselves whether we know at core level what is an aerofoil, what are its characteristics, what are its uh, parameters which decides the desired characteristics. And we have seen that especially the aerodynamic characteristics Mostly can be covered through knowing what is the CL max, what is the alpha stall, what is CM, AC, maybe whether flow is, flow is laminar, you want over most of the part of the wing, etc. If I take this CL max, we know that most of the time when the airplane will be flying, it will not be flying at CL max. But why we are giving so much stress on CL max? For simple reason, that V stall, which we understand this is the minimum speed at which the airplane can maintain a level unaccelerated flight is given by 2 W by S rho CL max. So if CL max is higher, then your V stall is lower. A v stall lower has a lot of advantages that your engine power requirement reduces. And also, you know, V touch down or V take off, they are almost like 1.2 to 1.3 times V stall. So, if V stall is less, then V take off and V touch down is also less. So, you have direct implication on the engine power selection. Right. There is another thing for a designer. 
you can see if you are taking off from a high altitude, maybe Leh, Ladakh, some, some place like that, that the density of air will be lesser compared to sea level density of air. So there also you see that because of high altitude, because rho goes down at high altitude, your V stall has a tendency to be more than V stall required at sea level. So how do I compensate that? Because anyway I have to take off from lay. So if I have a larger CL max, then I can manage that much of V stall which my engine power can deliver. Right? So this is one way of looking why do you want CL max. Please understand for an aircraft, takeoff and landing is very, very crucial. Mostly you, when you are flying at CL max, let us say I am flying at CL max, which is theoretically you are close to alpha stall. So imagine I am, I am coming for landing and because of some ground effect or ground upward wind, the local angle of attack suddenly increases. Then you are actually falling here. So that is very, very uh, bad way of operation. You do not operate at this point. Why you are operating at this point? Because you want high CL max. This is here. So instead, if you have something, the CL max is higher because of aerofoil or because of other considerations, you can as well fly here during takeoff and landing. So you are safe. So there is a reason why you want to operate at high CL max. So what we do by selecting an aerofoil, we try to see what is that aerofoil shape for which I will get CL max higher. Typically, you will find for conventional aerofoil, symmetric and all, the CL max is almost saturated at 1.2. Then what do we do? We say, okay, you introduce camber. We are introducing camber, so there is a camber line. By introducing camber, you are actually increasing further your CL max. That is where the camber part came. So we introduce camber to increase CL max. But note one thing, the moment I am introducing camber, this portion that is at alpha equal to 0, you are also getting CL0. So this also increases and you have to be careful about what is the effect of this in terms of balancing the aircraft. We will be talking about those. Alpha stall and CL max goes together. And let us say you have an aerofoil where maximum by doing this optimization that if I incre increase camber, CL max increases, but the stall also reduces. Uh, so you say, okay, at the most I can get CL max around 1.4 or 1.5, but from V stall requirement during takeoff and landing, you will be happier if CL max is around 2 or 2.5 or 3. Then what do you do? Then the point CL max, I increase not only through aerofoil, which is already basically present and already designed. So I use high lift devices. We will talk about high lift devices in detail. It essentially means that some portion of this is put down 10 degree, 15 degree. So effectively changing camber locally at that point and you have got a higher CL max. I have written here CMAC. The moment there is a camber, as you introduce camber and you know that if this is the camber I have introduced, then the lower portion resultant force will be in this direction, upper one in this direction, they do not pass from the same point. So about the aerodynamic center, when you want to shift these forces to aerodynamic center, it will have CMAC negative. That is one challenge you have to handle CMAC negative. 
more and more chamber you are giving, CMAC will become more and more negative. What is the issue of CMAC being more negative? Let us see that. Suppose this is the wing and this is the horizontal tail. I want to balance this airplane, that is balance this airplane in air, it should go like this and let us say this is the AC and somewhere you have kept, let us say CG is here or for simplification let me put CG somewhere here, that is I am writing a case where AC of the wing is ahead of CG. Now what will happen you see, as I give angle of attack alpha, there will be aerodynamic force I can represent roughly, I am just drawing perpendicular to this, uh, which is strictly it has to perpendicular to this, because angle of attack is small I am drawing it like this. So there will be a lift generated here, this will give a nose down moment at CG equivalent alpha which may not be equal to this alpha as you know this alpha tail will be lesser than this because of downwash. So this will generate a force here lift tail and I have to ensure that the moment balance is there that this lift giving moment about CG nose up this gives nose down. So I have to ensure the lift as well as the distances so that there is a moment balance. But the problem is once you have a cambered wing, you already have another CMAC which is less than 0. This moment is also there. You have to correct the moment about CG because of lift on the wing which is balanced by lift on the tail plus you have to balance the nose down moment which is coming because of CMAC. So the, if I just throw the wing, it will come like this. So you have to ensure that through tail. I balance the CMAC also, but unfortunately what is happening, the CMAC is less than 0, nose down. So any alpha here, it also gives a nose down, so this will not be able to handle CMAC negative. But you have ways of doing it, you know, we will see that we put the tail in a tail negative setting angle which tries to give force in this direction which gives a nose up moment. So all this uh, thing you have done in stability and control, what I am telling the moment you are using a cambered aerofoil, please be careful about CMAC. You should not allow CMAC to be very, very large and negative. Then you have to pay penalty or you have to do little ingenious way of handling how to do that, right. So this is what I thought I must share, which is nothing new for you, you have done these things. But of course, you know laminar, etc. flow. You have to maintain typical Reynolds number on the wing or major part of the wing so that it is able to generate laminar flow. At the same time, you know, if you want to make a laminar wing, manufacturing is demanding as well as keeping that wing clean is also demanding because small particles may locally turn the flow into a turbulent flow, right? Okay. There is another topic I was talking discussing was T by C, it is thickness to chord ratio right? and you should know from the discussion what came out was if I plot C L max by T by C, the trend will be something like this. A particular T by C generally it is between 10 to 14 percent, these are the design number, typical numbers, right? You get maximum CL max as far as effect of T by C is concerned. So most of design low subsonic you will find they will be operating around this. Uh, the moment you go high speed this Mach number effect also comes, right, because you need to have a smaller T by C so that you reduce the drag. In turn you increase CL by CD. So their T by C requirement will be more decided by the Mach number effect, okay. Similar T by C with drag, as T by C increases, drag also will increase. So let us say this is for 6% T by C, you would expect 
this is for 20% T by C. Typically, there will be increment based on different type of aerofoil, but you should know that there is going to be a penalty you are paying as you are increasing the T by C as far as drag is concerned, right? Or CD drag coefficient is concerned. Then another thing we discussed, which was very lot of time we spent, the critical Mach number. That is that free stream Mach number at which for the first time some part of the or some point on the aerofoil attains Mach 1, right? And if I see T by C versus Mach number, this critical Mach number, MCR, if I point it around, so it will typically it will be something like this. And this region is around 10 to 12 percent. Typically, M critical changes with T by C. This sort of a variation you will find, and this may be around 14 to, or, or not 14, maybe around 20 to 24 percent T by C. There is a large drop in critical mark number as you are going beyond 10 to 12 percent T by C. That is very important, right? Okay. So when you are trying to go for a high subsonic airplane and if for some reason you want to go for a T by C higher, you know what sort of penalty you are going to pay, right? Either you, if you have no other option, if you are so destined you have to go for higher T by C, one understanding can help you try to give a sweep, but as you give sweep you understand you are losing lift as well. So these are all sort of optimization goes on, right? You have to negotiate with all these conflicts. As a typical designer, if you want to just get feel for numbers, you will find Typically, this zone where your T by C is 10 to 14 percent, here mostly for Mach number range of 0 0.4 to 0 0.6, 0 0.7 around that, you will find T by C 10 to 14 percent or 12 to 14 percent will be okay. As you go higher speed 2 or Mach 3, you will be approaching towards T by C of 4 percent, which are generally available and being tested, right? This is the order of magnitude, right? You could see the difference, 10 to 12 or 14 percent to 4 percent, maybe 6 percent, maybe 5 percent, right? Around that. So this is one observation you must have. Also, please understand this critical mark number and CL have some sort of a correlation, right? Remember when you are having CL, uh, drag the CD will have a unique value for a given CL, right? Okay. So as the CL increases, CD also will increase. So let us see how M critical typically it varies with rough idea. Don't take too much on this. If this is 0.8, this is M critical. This may be around 0 0.4, 0 0.3, and these points are. This is point 0.1 to point 0.4, that range CL this is. So you have critical Mach number around point 0.8. As you go to higher CL, there is a huge drop in the Mach critical, critical Mach number. So you understand if you are flying at a higher CL, your critical Mach number is going to reduce. But if you are operating between point 0.1 to point 0.4, critical Mach number will be maximum that time manageable, right? Okay. Then there is another uh, discussion we had on the Kimber line. So let me write here monkey bar. One was location of Kimber 
that is maximum Kimber, right? And magnitude of Kimber, maximum Kimber. After all, why you introduce Kimber? The purpose was to get CL max higher, right? As far location of maximum Kimber is concerned, uh, understanding is if it is located 40% of the chord measured from leading edge, the typical number, then general feeling is that it gives good handling qualities. What happens if you move this location of T by C max forward toward the leading edge? Yes, it indeed increases your CL max partially, yes. However, your stalling alpha stall reduces very fast. And so, if you are really taking T by C maximum forward and forward, you will find that there is a tendency of the wing to stall abruptly. Right? So that is why you will find with all those data sets, as a designer, roughly 40 percent of the chord from leading edge, if you are locating the T by C maximum, you can start from the conceptual stage that it is likely to give good handling qualities. Right? These are the experiences I am sharing. These are not numbers which you can challenge in the court, right? 40 could be 35, 35 could be 37, but it is not 10 percent, okay, that way. And the knowledge I want to share with you is, if you see CL versus alpha, and if I am plotting, this is for 40 percent location, that is, maximum T by C maximum is at 40 percent of chord measured for leading edge and another if I draw this is 15 percent location. You could easily see that this is from a test data which follows the logic right. If T by C maximum is forward the flow will accelerate very fast right. So naturally it will stall also very fast. You see 15 percent location it is stalling much earlier and it is abrupt also this is important not like this this is abrupt okay which is not good as far as handling qualities are concerned. And if somebody asked me I was just checking data set if I want to know CL max versus T by C what sort of T by C I should take? Typically, you will find around 12 to 14 percent CL max will be maximum. CL max, this will be the maximum value. Generally, you get for low, low speed 12 to 14 percent because you know at high speed T by C vis a vis CL max is not that important as drag is important because finally CL by CD is important, right. So this has to be perceived in that manner. Also you could see how important is T by C if T by C is increased then critical Mach number reduces. So if you are designing a high speed airplane, high subsonic even. So you know man T by C increasing T by C may have advantage in CL max but I have to give penalty so critical Mach number will go down. So you have to find out alternate methods alternate attributes to optimize this right because there may be a conflict you indeed want T by C to be higher right? and also T by C as it goes down. Uh, or if I TYC as it goes up, drag diverges Mach number goes down. This is for high speed, this draws maximum sweat from the designer. 
because you know that yesterday we defined drag divergence Mach number, the sharp rise in the CD. So whatever T by C advantage you may be getting, but if it doesn't give you satisfaction or drag divergence Mach number for high subsonic airplane, we say thank you very much. I will find some other way. We have also touched upon something on leading edge radius. I thought I also mentioned this between radius 4 percent, 6 percent of, of chord, not much affected by math number. If you see from 0.4 to 0.75, and on that Mac, yes, small rise in CL Max is observed, but small. These are just uh, some observation. When you will be actually designing an airplane, we will see the data sheet and we will try to then recall, oh, what is this meaning? Is that happening or not? Right. Today I thought I will only do this much. Please uh, go through my lectures and also uh, take some textbook and read the relevant matters, see the data, do Googling. That is the best way to learn a design course because at the end of the day, we are not sitting together to design any configuration. That is the limitation here. Thank you. Thank you very much.